Jill here with another Use Up the Supply video. I don't think I will ever use up these supplies, but at least I'm using some different supplies. Um, as I showed you a minute ago, I have a set, a small set of Dilutions ink spray that I haven't used. I'm looking back through some journals. Um, this is the stencil I hope to use with it. Let me put it aside. I, um, I dug out an old journal. This little journal um, started way back in 2013, before I started drawing faces. So you can see I, I really didn't have a direction. I did some travel. Uh, this was one of my first use of dilution sprays with a stencil. And I tried to doodle over top, but I, I was frustrated because the dilution spray come up through whatever you put on there. Um, here is another one. I used some of the technique where you put a stencil on and spritz it with water and then blot it up and then did some doodling over top. Um, this journal is fun. The, I didn't date a lot of things, but I do know that this was 2013 because that was when we went down to Chesapeake Bay, 11-29-2013. So, I only got it out because I knew I had had some dilution pages in it. So I continued. This was a little gel print. This may have been more dilution spray. And I believe some glimmer mists. I have two glimmer mists, but they clogged up. I don't even know if they're usable anymore. I may get those out today. Who knows? There's some dragonflies. Now we jump up to 2017. So it was, a, you know, four years later. Um, this was a list of birds we had seen, and these were some lessons with Christy Sobolewski. These I dated, uh, 11, 17. The use of color to change emotion. Look at this. How pretty is that? I love that. That was also with Christy. Uh, cool and warm on two sides of the face. A little bit of travel. We were in Hilton Heads Islands. This is also a Christy lesson. She did this girl with this beautiful hair. Um more along that line. These are some silly things. Who was this? This was, I think, a James Luke Burke lesson. Totally not my style, uh, but it was fun. It was something different. And I continued. These were things my grandsons did in 2017, the baby and my older grandson. Now this, I like. It was part of Christie's creating a scene, um, and it was based on what I see on my way to work. I like that. The only reason I'm going through this is there's something back here I want to show you that I did really like. This page, how cool is this? Uh, Christy was doing a section where she was cutting out pages. Isn't that nice? I like that. I think maybe I should do more of that. But anyway, this was after I started painting faces. You notice in 2013 I didn't do any faces. This was a Jane Davenport stencil. I can never make that stencil work. That's in my giveaway pile. And some more, some Christmas stuff, some stuff for my grandson. Here's another cutout from a Christy live stream, I think. And that's it. So, uh, I have lots of unfinished journals. Uh, this is, I'm pleased, it started in 2013 and finished it 2017. Um, that was good. So, this is my current big journal. I'm down to the last... The last few pages of it and it's good because this is what Saturday April 27th and I'll start a new journal in May so I hesitate to use my big journal because of the limited experience I've had with these sprays is they get all over the place they're intense they're strong I mean they're beautiful and they continually to come up through whatever work you're doing over top so I, you know, think to myself, oh, I should just give them away. I'm like, no, um, maybe I can use them. I don't think I'll ever let my grandkids use them because I could just imagine the wild mess. So I would like to use this stencil that I got at Art of the Carolinas. I'm not sure who it's by, but it's got a lot of nice little details. And I thought I would start with some gesso resist. And the other thing, let me mention early in the video, I had purchased these two Jane Davenport fine line bottles on some sort of mega sale. All of her products were 50% off and I had another 25% off sale coupons and they've been sitting here. 
And I thought maybe this is the answer to working on top of the dilution inks. I will fill one of these with black acrylic ink. Before I decide whether I should use white acrylic ink or white fluid acrylic paint, like a golden, I'm going to see how the black ink works in the one bottle. So if I do a gesso resist, a limited color, two or three colors of Dilutions spray, maybe a little stamping, then I can do my drawing with a black fine line bottle. What do you think? Black acrylic ink should go across the top of that Dilutions without a problem. If all else fails, I do have some Sharpie paint markers. I could probably draw on top. I also have, see I, when I start these, I don't know where it's going to go. I thought maybe I could do some sketching with a charcoal pencil, but I also have these Pentel brushes that may work for drawing on top of that illusion thing. So let's see where it goes. This should be dry. You probably cannot see the gesso resist. I can see it in person exactly where it is. I tried to leave a little bit of an open area here for my face. I decided to go with three. <laughs> Jill, if you're watching my friend Jill, you'll be like, no kidding. They're the go-to colors. Lemon zest, fresh lime, and turquoise. I wanted to get three that I was sure would blend without making mud. Um, and I probably, this tells you that these are probably not my thing. People who use these inks kind of live with the fact it's going to get all over your journal, all over the next page, all over the previous pages, run through the binding. Look, I don't want that. I taped off this little edge of my binding. I put some deli paper over here and deli paper back here. Oh, because I just, this is an almost finished journal. I don't want to go back and ruin any of those pages that I'm really happy with. Um, maybe if what I was getting ink on were upcoming pages, I could work with it. I just don't want to get it on pages that are already done. So anyway, neither here nor there. Let's get started. Um, it seems to me the key to these is rolling paper towels over to blot the excess. So I have a paper towel roll ready and a spray bottle because the first thing we want to do is lightly mist that so our inks blend. Oh, you know, I didn't even test these. People say they clog. Who knows if these clogged or not? Ha! Ah. Yep. Look at that. Haven't used it in years. They sell replacement tops for these. I really don't want to buy replacement tops. Let's try the other yellow. This is pure sunshine. Um, can you believe it? Oh, are any of these going to work? Oh, we could call this a fail. <laughs> you know, I'll have to go out. What do you mean I have to go out and buy spray bottles and like start all over? Let's try the fresh lime. Oh, fresh lime is spring. We got something. So let's try that. Let's hope for the turquoise. Okay, turquoise. Oh, no. Oh, got some trips. <sighs> Neither yellow works. Um, well, let's just, let me just blot this off right now before it gets out of control. All right, that's a start. Oh, well, that that lime, fresh lime. Excuse me, I'm going to sneeze. Okay, I edited edited that out. The fresh lime is yellow enough. And look, I'm liking some of those colors and some of that spattered look. I could keep that. Um, let's put some fresh lime down here where the face is going to go. Ow. 
and maybe I could pick up this darker blue if it sprays. London blue. Just so we can get a third color in. Wow, that's dark. Let's blot it up. I don't like the look of that there. Let's go back to some turquoise. Look at all the, I guess it's waste in the paper towels, but maybe I could use those towels for collage later. They're pretty colors. All right, all I wanna do now is, well, look, <laughs> it just goes to show. I should, I should test stuff before I make a video, huh? It's all right, maybe these are the, this is the way things go in your art room as well. I'm gonna get this off the tape. Now when I pull this tape, it's gonna leave a little teeny white edge. I might go back in with a brush just to give it some color so it's not. I see one little white section up there I don't particularly care for. Let's... All right. I'm going to either let this dry or dry it with the dryer and I will be right back. All right, so this is pretty much dry. It's not completely dry. It's deceiving how much ink actually seeps into your paper. I did it with a dryer. And you know, it's dry to the touch, but if you, you can feel the damp and cold in that paper. But I'm pretty safe, I think, to use some Ranger ink for my big ink pad. And I just want some, I don't know, some something in the background that's really not going to be an image at all. This is a go-to set of mine. It's a cheapy set. I it, look, it cost me $2 at AC Moore, Heidi Grace rubber cling stamps. So, I like the ones that is, the one that is words. Let me get these out. Pardon the, all the crinkling noise. I don't know if I have ever used the houses. Yeah, I have. There's black on them. And I like this little texture one, too. A little kind of, kind of flowers. So, let's see. Let's see what I can do with these. I'm going to start with the words. Ink them up. Let's see how much comes out. Oh, that's good. I just want a hint. this has been pretty painless. Um, things went as I expected, except for my bottles being clogged. Um, the only thing I'm really not pleased about right now is the, the way the white gesso looks. It's kind of a cold white where my colors are really warm. Next time I might consider a gloss gel medium or a matte medium as the resist rather than the white gesso. I don't know. It would be an interesting experiment maybe on this other page. And I think on this other page, I'm going to plan to use up 
these towels for um, collage. What do you think? So anyway, but that's for another day. I went ahead and put my... I didn't put a lot. I'm a little bit afraid. It seems awfully thin. I don't have a fluid acrylic black. And I didn't want to water down acrylic paint. So I put some in here. I can always pour it back in if it's a disaster. I mean, if I were to fill this up, I'd use almost all of my black ink. I do notice that this lid, I've never used these bottles before. I have a lot of success with a fine line bottle with masking fluid in it. You can buy those fine line bottles empty. I think in the future, if I want to do more of this, I'm going to buy those fine line bottles. They, I know, are a good quality. When I pull this cap off, it wants to pull this yellow off with it. So just be aware of that. Now, I'm not going to try it first on my page because what if it comes splashing out? I also realized I have some um, other markers I can use. These three are all Pentel and I can't remember. Obviously this is a gray and I can't remember which of these are pigment and which are dye based and which are permanent. Um, I, somewhere in my other journals I have swatches of all of them. And this is a mermaid marker, which would be a light gray, which I thought might be good for shading in the face. This color is Stormy Seas. It's one of the uh, bleached series of mermaid markers. I thought I would just maybe use a charcoal pencil to sketch out. Now I also have my good Pitt Artist Pen shades of gray, but I'm afraid to use these on top of this. I don't want to pull that ink up and ruin my markers. I really like that set of markers. So, just, you know, my ponderings on the way this should work. So, let's see. First, I'm going to do this. So, that's the mermaid marker gray. That might be good for shading. And I'm not worried. If some of this ink pulls up into this, it'll just rinse right out. This is my... Hmm. Okay, that's a nice... Look, nice dark. I don't know why it's in a gray barrel. That's not a gray. <laughs> it's been a while since I've used them. I don't remember. Maybe this one is the gray wash. Squeeze a little bit out. Oh, no, that's... Well, maybe that is a gray wash. See that? Okay, that's interesting. I just had to remember to squeeze them out over top of a dish, not on my work. And this is a black. So, all right, so that's the four of those. Let's give this a try. Let's see what happens. <laughs> uh, here, let's put this down in case of disaster. Okay, this is no squeezing whatsoever. See that thin line? This is squeezing. All right, I can live with that. Now, if I wanted to, I could take a small brush while it's wet. Jill, let's work fast. This is not the best brush, but let me take a wet brush. And I could, ooh, no. Now, see, I'm glad I tried that here. That really drags it too far. I was thinking about, well, some shading. Hmm, I'm really unhappy with that brush. Let me try. Oof. I'll try this bigger watercolor brush. Let's see what happens. I'm going to have to be careful. It really explodes. Yeah, but you know what? That has possibilities. I just have to watch how much water. And that's acrylic ink, so that's going to dry permanent. Once it dries, I won't be able to blend it anymore. This is a strip of watercolor paper I had left from something else. That gray is nice for shading. I 
I hope, I hope you guys don't mind watching this kind of play. But this is, oh, uh, this is where I learn stuff. Anyway, anyway, okay, let's put that aside. Let it dry. That'll turn into something too, some sort of collage element. So, here's my page. Let me. Do I do I start with a charcoal pencil? Sh sure. I'm going to do a really basic straight on face because I don't want to stress. I want this page to be fun. There's my two eyes. I'm going to have her looking over to the side just because. such a thick pencil it's kind of rough Okay, and then I always get down to the hair, and I I don't have a plan ahead of time for the hair. So I'm now like, okay, what's it going to be? It's going to be big. Or is it going to be straight flowing hair? I think I'm going to leave it at that. Just a, I don't know, a suggestion of some sort of hair up there. I don't know. Let's try. So, <laughs> oh, now I've given myself too many options. Do I work with the brushes or do I work with the fine liner? I'm going to work with the fine liner. I can always go back in with the brushes. Okay. So. I always start with eyes. I got to I can tell right now I got to be careful not to squeeze. The ink is so thin, it's just running out. So maybe what I'll do is I will let this dry and go back with brushes for a little more shading. It's going to take some patience because I'll have to wait till that's completely dry.
I also hope to use this fine liner bottle for journaling. Oh, that's pretty cool. I like that. I need a small, good brush. Maybe this one. This is number three round. I'm going to wet it. But blot a lot off. I gotta be careful of that. I think I should stop. Let that dry. And work shading with something else. Um, but it would not hurt at this point. I'm gonna turn this and hope it's still in the picture. I'm going to add some scribble journal. I will speed this part up. So I cheated a little bit. I tried some of this marker here under her chin for some shading. I don't know if I... I think I'm going to go with the mermaid marker. This is dry. I dried it with a heat gun. I think I'm going to use the mermaid marker because I know it's water soluble. And I know it's light. So I can add just a hint of shading where I want it. And I kept a brush handy, a wet brush for softening it out. I know I want some shading down here. I think it's just picking up some of that charcoal and moving it around right now. Clean out my brush and soften that line right there. I'm going to try and add some Shading in the whites of the eyes there. And under her nose. We add a little more ink there. Hopefully that's not too much. Rinse my brush out. I 
add a little more drama over there. Pretty much, I think all I'm going to do in the face. Now I have to decide. I'm sorry I'm not talking. I wanted to bring in... That's probably a little too high on her hair, huh? Maybe a little too much. See if I can lighten it up. I want to... I do want to make a suggestion of hair down here, though. And maybe not know where it ends, just know that it starts there. I think the mer mermaid marker was a good decision. It's working well on top of the Dilutions ink. So now, does this page need any more? Um, the only thing it might need is some sort of a, oh, see, that's what I was talking about. You pull the lid off and this pops off. That's pretty annoying. That should not happen. Uh, that could be a pretty big disaster waiting to happen over top of your project. Um, now I'm getting ink all over my fingers trying to put that back on. <sighs> so, then don't turn your bottle sideways and pull this cap off because that's a catastrophe waiting to happen. I'm going to... It's a terrible scratchy sound you're hearing in this. I'm just going to go around the edge. Just because. Who knows if I should have done that or not. I wonder if I could... I have not been signing my pages in my journal. I wonder if I can sign with this. Yes. There we go. All right. I um, hope you enjoyed this video. And if you have some Dilutions ink sprays, maybe you'll give it a try. I think I do want to try a few more techniques with this. Like I said, I want to try some different resists other than the gesso. I'm pretty happy with the way the fine liner writes. I'm not happy with the bottle, the way it's behaving. So the jury's out on that one. I think I'll try the other one with some white high flow paint. Maybe I'll use it in the next video, let you know how that happens. So if you like it, give it a thumbs up. Uh, leave me a comment. Thank you so much for watching and have a happy creative day. See you soon. Mm -hmm.